Alexa, turn on office light. No one was responding. Alexa, turn on office. All right, I will probably trim this up in the editor and cut off the beginning chunk, uh, you know, before everybody gets here. Uh, I will make a quick announcement, though. If you are watching this on replay and you don't see the live chat, well, first, two things, because I got a lot of comments about people not seeing notifications. There's nothing I can do about that. That's, that's something either on YouTube's end or something in your settings. So I would encourage you, go into settings, then notifications, then just see which boxes are checked or, you know, little slider things are moved. Because just telling me you didn't get notifications, like I said, I can't do anything about that. And it just sort of frustrates me to hear that you're not getting notifications. The second thing that I've gotten is comments from people saying, I didn't see the live chat window. That doesn't help me in terms of troubleshooting. If you want me to help or attempt to help, I need to know what kind of device you're on. Are you on an Apple device? Are you on an Android? Are you using a YouTube app? Are you using a browser? How are you watching this that you're not seeing the chat window? That That's helpful to me. That doesn't necessarily mean I can help you, but it is helpful information to me because I swear I am checking the box that says, show the live chat window on replay. So now that we got that out of the way, uh, we've got we've got some people here. So uh, good morning, Eric. Good morning, Sherry. Good morning, Song is Broken. Good morning, Weather's Windy, assuming it's morning, you know, where you're at. Um, we'll, uh, we'll wait just a, a moment till we get a few more people. The, the last one we did, we had a ton. I mean, way more than any... Uh, member live stream that I've ever done on Sirius Keto. So that's kind of exciting. Apparently people are interested in what's going on and or they just want to see spontaneous Steve. Good morning, Halo. Good morning, Erica. We'll hit some point probably where I, you know, I can't just keep saying hello to everybody. So those of you that get in early, you get the special hello from Steve. Having a little Tazo Zen green tea with mint and I got the uh, keto chow, which was it? I think it's the daily minerals. It's what whatever one has Dr. Barry, uh, you know, his mug on the little squirt bottle. That's what's in here right now. Uh, let's see. Let me check some things off my list because I already said uh, live chat on replay. The other sort of housekeeping thing that I need to do and will probably do Thursday is starting to fix my thumbnails on Lean Body Mind, including the ones for the live chat, because it just does just this little Lean Body Mind uh, in the middle. Uh, the, the issue that I have is I used to do those thumbnails in Photoshop Elements, and I've got Photoshop Elements 14, but I upgraded my PC, and apparently because I put in a new processor, it does, it's like, oh, I'm sorry, this license is already taken. And I've gone out to the Adobe site. I've tried canceling the license so that I could put it on this PC, and it's not working. So I bit the bullet and decided, all right, I, I'm still operating on like the 2014 version of Adobe Photoshop Elements. I'll order it from um, Amazon, and I'll have that tomorrow. Now, you might be saying, well, why don't, why don't you just you know, be a stud and go up to full Adobe Photoshop? I've tried. In fact, I've got Creative Cloud with Photoshop, uh, yeah, photo, actual Photoshop, and I just find the interface is too, it's too technical for me. I need something that's kind of dumbed down. So Photoshop Elements, more my speed, and then probably once I have that, I can extract certain layers that I've created within Photoshop Elements with the various uh, little meditating dude icons and pull those into Canva, which has become my new favorite way to make thumbnails. So that's the long story version of I need to 
start cleaning up and making my thumbnails look a little bit better on Lean Body Mind, and uh, we'll get that done. So good morning, LJ. Doug, uh, no, we're not doing a uh, bottle of wine giveaway. I used to have two full racks of wine. That's the that's a 144 bottle rack. I used to have another one back there where the pop figures are, and uh, because we made our own wine, and um, you know, we cleared out a bunch of that. I just I wanted more space uh, in my office for pop figures. But, you know, now that I'm not drinking and it's just the wife drinking, we just have a, a handful of bottles that we made and then some of our more expensive wines, you know, special occasion type wines. And who knows, maybe someday there will be a special occasion where I decide to have a glass. But, um, yeah, I, I could see us uh, probably moving, you know, finishing well, us. I could see my wife finishing that wine and then maybe moving that wine rack out, selling it. and. Uh, Get a, get a better bookshelf because, as you can see, anytime you have to start stacking books like that horizontally, it's time to uh, expand your bookshelf. Eric asks, what do you think about golden ratio coffee during a fast? I've been knocking it around. If I start getting bored of tea, I've got plenty of the golden ratio. Um, I'm going to have to look and see if on the box if it says anything about it containing any calories or, or anything like that. It's sort of, it's one of those that I, I've got there just in case. Um, so I don't, I don't have a strong answer for you yet, but it's, uh, I, I've got a pile uh, out on the kitchen table since Terry's gone and I can do whatever I want. I, I don't have to worry about her being like, well, what's this stuff doing on the table? So I've got my, you know, Celestial Seasonings, uh, Sleepy Time Extra Tea, and my Tazo Zen, and then this Blood Pressure Tea that, that I got. Um, and then I got like Lipton tea bags too. If I decided I wanted to do anything with that, I probably, what I probably should have done before I started this is done a big batch of sun tea, but I wasn't thinking. And I think that takes a couple of days out in the sun to, to really get the right concentration. So there you go. All right. To cross off fixing thumbnails. Uh, right now I'm about 87 hours into the fast. Um, two nights ago, so not last night, but the night before was a horrible, horrible night of sleep. And I don't know how much of that was the fast versus a couple of other things that went on. First, I was up till about midnight. I had a lot of energy that day and just was, I wasn't getting tired. So, uh, I called up a friend and said, Hey, you want to get on Xbox live and, you know, play a little sniper elite five. And we, you know, we gamed till about midnight. And by then I was feeling fairly tired and went to bed. And then at about two in the morning, my girl cat, the one that I think that I'm really struggling, whether this is the week that I might need to put her to sleep um, because she's having a lot more bad days than good. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of telltale signs that she's sort of on, on her way. She's winding down and, uh, I don't want her to be in a position where, you know, she's, she's miserable. Anyhow, part of that misery manifests itself in the middle of the night, usually around 2 AM, sometimes a little bit earlier. She'll be in the middle of the living room. Like normally she just hides lately. She just hides in our closet. And sometimes she'll like stick her head into the shoe rack. Like, like okay, now I'm really hidden. No one can see me. Uh, but she'll go out into the living room in the middle of the night and start this just mournful wailing. It's like, like an empire strikes back when on Hoth, when they close the doors and, and Han Solo and, and Luke are still outside and the, you know, C-3PO says the likelihood of survival is whatever it is. And Chewbacca's like, Aah! that's the way that Arwen meows in the middle of the night. And I come out into the living room and of course there's nothing there. It's not, I don't see any ghosts or anything, but I go to the back patio and I open the door and then she'll go out and then she'll hang out outside and make that same meowing. But, you know, I, apparently she wanted to go out because I opened the door and she went out and then I don't have to listen to that meowing. So I'm back to sleep. And then at three in the morning, I hear this alarm and it wakes me up. And I'm like, what was that? What was that? I'm looking around. You know, I've never heard this sound before. 
And at first I'm thinking, okay, maybe it was just, it was just a bad dream, some sort of a dream hallucination, something. So I go back to sleep. And then at 3.30, this alarm goes off again. And again, I'm like, wait, where is that coming from? Is that, you know, is that, is Terry, did she leave her phone here? You know, it's, it, it's not the same alarm as like when you get an Amber alert on your phone or a weather alert, but it was sort of similar to that. And again, I'm just, I'm perplexed. What is making this noise? Go back to sleep again. Half hour later, same alarm. This time I, I look over at my phone and I see that it's still lit up. And I see I've got a notification from my Dexcom app telling me that my blood glucose has gone too low. And I'm, I'm going through the app and there's no way to turn the alarm off. It will still go on even if you have do not disturb set and you cannot change the threshold, the minimum blood glucose level, you know, to, to keep the alarm down. And uh, this is uncool. So I, I turn the phone off for the rest of the night. And then at five, my boy cat, Thumper, who appears in some videos, um, if you're if you're a channel member, you've already seen the Tikamale video that I did. Thumper shows up in that. You can hear him a few times, but you see him actually in it during when Terry's having her bite of food. Anyhow, he started meowing, and that, that's because he wants to go outside at five in the morning. So now it's five in the morning. I'm awake again, and at this point, I'm just I'm sort of pissed off and can't fall back asleep anymore. And sort of like five thirty, I got up, went out for a walk, but my sleep score. From my withing sleep mat was let me just look it up in my biometrics list here 42 out of 100 so not very good however last night my sleep score was 100 it was great uh i was exhausted i took some sleepy time tea i took a hot shower you know and then popped into bed out like a light until six this morning then went out walked five, a little over five miles, and uh, then started taking care of my to-do list. So here I am. Uh, I am feeling kind of a, a little bit, a little weaker than normal. My, my mile times on average were about a minute longer per mile than my normal walking speed. So I'm not, a, I'm not exactly at full speed here. I feel a little bit you know, a little low on energy. I may later, you know, try doing a light strength workout just to, to test the water. But uh, that's, uh, that's sort of the physical update on me. Now let me catch up on questions. So Leonard says he made it. Uh, of all that tea, you're gonna have a lot of TP. Uh, the big problem is actually the, is it the I, magnesium that's in uh, Epsom salts. So I have been doing, the first day I did a full out colon cleanse, like two tablespoons and a pint of water. And that, that'll clean you out uh, for sure. And then I thought, well, what I'll do just, you know, I'll, I'll lower the dosage on, you know, the subsequent days. So I've been doing like one tablespoon and, uh, it's, it's still pretty effective at uh, taking care of business down here. So that's that. So Halo says, yeah, she's hiding. It's probably time. Uh, thank you, Eric. I, I didn't do the, the, the gargly noise on my Wookiee impression that Chewbacca does. He's more of a, <laughs> no, I can't do it. I can't get the, <laughs> and the gargle at the same time. So, uh, lambs, um, our cats are 20 years old and we've kind of had to get to a point food wise where, uh, you know, we, we find whatever, you know, brand is the like super gentle on your tummy brand. I don't know if carnivore is more gentle on their tummy than, than this food, because, um, uh, what, what tends to happen is Arwen will come out of hiding she'll eat then she'll throw up and you know then she'll go back in hiding we've also had some issues with her uh going to the bathroom number one and number two outside of the litter box and 
you know, at first we thought this might have been a behavioral thing because we, we got some of that uh, when Colton started living here. And I think she was like, okay, here's another creature about my size. Maybe, you know, I need to be a little territorial. Uh, but I think we corrected that behavior. And, you know, we went through a lot of the, um, what's it called? Natural something. It's some enzymatic urine destroyer uh, liquid. We had a lot of that. And I was going all around the house with a black light flashlight, you know, finding spots and, and things like that. But um, j just in general, you know, we're finding you know, some behavioral, whether it's behavioral or just, you know, old and can't control herself anymore uh, type of issues. So Song is Broken asks, how low did your glucose get when the alarm went off? The threshold is 55. And I think I hit 55. But when he hit, I think, 60, 65 or 60, it starts sending out warnings like you're trending low. Now, I went and I did a blood glucose test with my Keto Mojo, and I was not that low. I was like 73 or something like that. So I went in and I recalibrated the app and said, I'm at 73. I'm not at 53. And, and things were fine for a day. And then last night, again, it started and I tested again. And even though it said I was at like 55, I was at, you know, the low 70s on my Keto Mojo I only had like 12 hours left on the sensor, maybe a little bit longer. I think the sensor was supposed to expire at around noon today. So I'm like, forget it. I'm just pulling the sensor off and um, I'll wait until the fast is done before I put on a new one because that whole alarm thing is uncool. So hello, Marine Mom. Hello, Lisa. What else is on my list here? I talked about the Dexcom alarms. Talked about my energy level. So, uh, in terms of like getting stuff done this week, it's been, it's been pretty cool. I, I've actually overloaded my to-do list and still get almost all of it done. The one thing that was on the to-do list yesterday that didn't get done, might not get done again today, is me cleaning up my whole networking area back in the other side of this wall over here. So replacing uh, my router, replacing a couple of uh, gigabit switches, or actually they're 100 megabit switches, but replacing them with gigabit switches, and then just a whole lot of cable control that needs to occur. There's uh, just, it's a mess. So um, that needs to happen. I need to run out um, and pick up some ingredients for the sous chef and executive chef kitchen live stream that I'll be doing on Thursday. I figure, you know, initially I talked about running this fast for five days to a week. So five days would be Wednesday night. But I, I anticipate seeing myself hitting that point and saying, well, you know what? I can, you know, all I got to do is skip one more meal, go to bed and, you know, we'll be at, I don't know how many hours that is. It's a decent number, 120 or something. I don't know. Um or if I just stretch it through, you know, Thursday, I hit 120. I've been kind of doing the math the best I can. I wish a day were 20 hours long instead of 24. That would make the multiplication so much easier. But I digress. I figure if I'm going to do the kitchen live stream, I need to make something that I won't be eating at that time, which means creating something either, well, probably something fermentable, you know, something that I'm going to make and then has to sit for a while. So I'm looking at either doing some sort of a fermented hot sauce or perhaps doing kimchi. And the one, the one issue with most kimchi recipes that I've seen is it involves uh, a couple of tablespoons of glutinous rice flour, which I happen to have because I've got everything, you know. Um, I know it's not keto, but, or, well, actually, I'll take that back because... Like I often quote from Dr. Westman, there's no such thing as keto food. You're either fat burning or you're not. So I probably won't make a, like a formal video of it because I, you know, not in the mood to deal with the ingredient police, but I looked up how much two and a half tablespoons of glutinous rice, rice flour are in terms of carbohydrates. And it's 11 grams total and net, 
which would be a big deal if I were eating it maybe all at once, but I'm putting it in a quart or more. Probably It's probably going to be about a quart jar, I anticipate. A head of Napa cabbage, once it starts to wilt down, it's probably a quart jar. So we're talking a lot of servings. The overall carb impact is probably going to be half a gram per serving, maybe, or less. So to me, not a big deal. Anyhow, I do need to run out and collect everything, you know, the Napa cabbage, daikon, radish, ginger, some some fresh garlic, etc. So that's on the list today. Song is Broken says, have you ever made sauerkraut? Yes, I have. And you know what? I'll probably do some more of that soon as well, too. Um, and I, you know, I need to do another big batch, create another big batch of bratwursts. Connor and I haven't made bratwursts in a while. We haven't made any sausages in quite a while, probably since before. I think we've done one type of sausage since, uh, he got back out of the army. So, um, and I've got a ton of pork belly in the freezer, so we could, we could easily be doing some bratwursts. And, you know, some other sausages as well. So we need to get on that. I need to find a day where I can get him to come over because it's really, it's, it's a lot better as a two person process it goes way more smoothly, both the meat grinding as well as the sausage stuffing. Um, I don't fully understand uh, what, what Leonard just said, aside from the fact that it rhymes. Dilution is a solution to pollution. Okay. And lower carbs. Maybe, maybe you just mean like, uh, because I'm spreading the glutinous rice across a lot of servings, not a big deal for carbs. Sandra says, when I finally get the house, uh, straight, I'm going to make kimchi and kombucha. I can't wait for the kombucha. I've got some fermenting in gallon jars. I've done kombucha before. Uh, once, you know, I'd bought the, what they, is it called the, not the, is it called the Sobe? Is that what it's called? There's a name for like the mother, essentially that big disc of gelatinous stuff that you put in and it causes the fermentation. Um, I had done that a few years ago and, uh, I mean, it was pretty tasty, but I had no, I, you know, once I went keto, I knew that there was going to be a fair amount of, yeah, SCOBY. Thank you, Kim. I knew that there was going to be a fair amount of carbs in it, you know, just because, you know, you're making it off of, you know, generally juice or honey or, or something like that. Now, interestingly, I found that there is a brand, I don't know if it's called Yum, like Y-U-M-M -M or something like that. And they have a no sugar kombucha. It's made with allulose. So I bought uh, the two flavors that they had at Target yesterday because I figure, Maybe as I'm coming off of this fast, that's something I can do that's, again, good for my gut microbiome. Um, and it gives me an opportunity to do a review that I can safely do coming out of a fast for next Wednesday. So, win-win. Song is Broken says, I don't see a difference between net carbs and total carbs. Uh, is there a difference for you? Absolutely, there is for me provided it's real fiber, you know, that's, or, you know, the artificial sweetener that's being used is not highly glycemic. Therein lies the rub. If it's something I'm making and I know what the ingredients are, if I know the sweetener that's going in, if I know that the fiber is legit fiber, then absolutely net carbs works for me. If it's, and this is one of the reasons why I do the glucose testing, because there are a lot of brands and manufacturers out there that play, in my opinion, kind of fast and loose with net carbs. There are a number of different fibers or things that qualify as fiber that they put into their product that I believe the body does process and, you know, causes a, a response. The, some of the tortillas that I tried are an example of that. There are also certain sweeteners such as sorbitol, I believe is, is one of them, that has a glycemic index that's like close to regular table sugar. So yeah, I'm, I'm probably going to do an episode of Pragmatic Keto maybe as soon as next month 
where I really dive into total carbs versus net carbs. My belief is that if you are doing total carbs, you probably can't go wrong. If you're doing net carbs, I think you need to be fairly skeptical of anything prepackaged and test yourself and see what happens. If you're making it yourself and it's ingredients that are trusted by you, you've, you know, you've made this before, you've tested it before, you know that certain things just aren't going to impact you, then net carbs is fine. Leonard asks, what are your go-to foods for breaking a fast? I am going to, well, I had one person who has done a few 30-day fasts that said, you should start with a vegetable juice, like fresh juiced vegetable juice, but it can't be anything sweet. So like no carrots. Um, and I started thinking, well, what am I going to juice if I can't, you know, throw like a carrot and an apple in there? Cause I've done juicing before when the movie, uh, fat, sick and nearly dead by Joe cross came out a number of years ago, 10 or more. I decided I would do a 30 day juice fast, lost a lot of weight. I think my skin looked just amazing. And then I'm like, all right, I'm sick of this juice fast and put on all the weight right back again. So I've got a juicer still, I've got a Breville juicer and I could juice, but, and I've got some experience with juicing, but if you're not throwing like an apple or some carrot or something into some juice, that's, uh, geez, that's not very tasty. Like I'm not gonna just go and get a bunch of spinach and uh, uh, celery and make juice out of it. That's completely unappealing to me. So I probably won't do that. I will probably do a vegetable broth for starters, then probably move on to bone broth, either chicken or beef. And from there, I'm kind of wondering, I got to do a little bit of research. Part of me is, you know, thinking, well, should I try some keto chow? Which was, which is going to be the better way, you know, the better next step, like still stay with a liquid like keto chow or do something, you know, like steamed vegetables you know, and some poached chicken breast or, or something like that. Fortunately, I still have a few days to figure that out. Sherry says, oh, I could juice cucumbers. Yeah, I could. I don't know. We'll see. When I go to the store for my kimchi ingredients, maybe I'll buy a few things um, that I can, you know, throw into the juicer, give that a whirl, see if it still works, at least, you know, once. Um, I wonder if zucchini juice as well. I've got a ton of zucchini. I had to harvest a bunch of zucchini yesterday and because I figured I wasn't going to get to it in time. First, I wanted to harvest it before they started becoming, you know, like this. But then, um, you know, I, I cut it into wedges and then put it on a cookie sheet and froze it and then take it out and then put it in the Ziploc bag and back in the freezer because if you freeze it all together, it just sticks together and you don't want that. Um Julie asks, have you tried the egg white bread? Do you really like it? I tried a recipe and it was like memory foam, both in texture and taste. Here's my thoughts on that. Um, the original egg white bread, the Maria Emmerich egg white bread, to me is somewhere between memory foam and angel food cake. And I know there's all kinds of Instagram shorts of her eating it and making the yummy face. But when I ate it, I didn't make the yummy face. I made the, hmm, I don't know how I feel about this face. Fortunately, people like Indigo and Neely have done a great job at further working that recipe. And I I found that the Indigo Neely bread and uh, I did her hot dog buns that, you know, I'd mentioned to her, like, I'd love to do a hot dog bun. I just don't have the baking chops anymore. I had the pre, pre-keto, I was a pretty good baker. Post-keto, not so much, which is why you don't see those sort of videos from me. So I encouraged Neely to, to play around with her recipes and see if she could come up with a hot dog bun so that I could have a hot dog bun. And she did. And I found that those are pretty good. Cloudforge says, regarding the Dexcom alert, I wanted to confirm there is no way to turn off that alert. I usually disable Bluetooth instead of turning off the phone. Didn't occur to me. Probably could have done that. Hello, Dorothy. Hello, Corliss. I'm going to have a little drink of tea. And uh, we'll probably... Uh, oops, why is my watch? Suddenly, I, I got serious attention somehow on my watch. I had too many devices listening to me, I think, sometimes. Where was I going with this? Oh, I'm probably going to... 
only go mm, for like 45 minutes on this particular live stream just because I got to get back to my to-do list, got to get some errands run. And it is just beautiful outside right now in southeastern Wisconsin. It is my watch says mostly cloudy, but when I was out there a few minutes ago, it was mostly sunny and it's 75 degrees. I got to get out into the garden and prune some tomato plants. Halo says homemade vegetable broth. I don't know that I, ha I may have some, I got to check the freezer. I had done a, uh, like a vegetable demi gloss. You know, it's where I did vegetable broth and then did a reduction. And I can't remember if I added anything else to it to make it a little more glazy. But uh, it's possible that what I have is is a demi-gloss, not a, uh, a broth. I need to check. I've got all of these like little, uh, they're not Rubbermaid. They're the, uh, the little containers that uh, like Hillshire Farms, like sliced meats came in. I got a, just a ton of those with frozen broth of various types out in the freezer. And I need to go do an inventory of that, which is what I will put on my to-do list right now. Broth inventory. So good morning, PA. Corliss in Arkansas says, much hotter than Wisconsin. Yeah, there are times that um, I love Wisconsin. There are times not so much. Those not so much times tend to be winter, but summers here, not too shabby. Debbie says, hi from Vegas. Have you tried canning? Yes, I can a lot. And um, we're going to hit, we'll hit a point. Where, well, we didn't do cucumbers this year, just because we always hit a point where we're like, we're canning so many cucumbers we got cucumbers for a year so we opted not to do cucumbers this year but uh i will still wind up you know probably we'll wind up having a point where we've got way too many tomatoes and peppers that we just can't go through fast enough and we'll wind up canning those the cool thing that i've discovered with the anova precision oven so i used to when i first started canning i've got this massive, I don't know what brand it is, but the thing is just ginormous, a ginormous pressure cooker canner thing it takes forever to come up to heat. And I would I'd sterilize my jars in that. And then I would do the canning in that. And it's the whole process slow. Plus whether you're canning two jars or 12 jars, you're still dealing with this massive, massive pot. Now I've got a lot more scalability. First off, with the Anova Precision Oven, I can actually sterilize my jars and caps pretty rapidly. I mean, I, I was talking to my wife, who's a surgical nurse, and she's like, yeah, it's basically, you're going to make this thing into an autoclave. Just you know, set it to 220 degrees, 100% steam. Once it hits temp, four minutes later, sterilized. That's what we do for surgical instruments. So that's cool. That speeds things up quite a bit and adds to the scalability. Plus, you can also, if you want, do, um, I could do pressure cook or do a low temp canning with sous vide. That's kind of cool the way that that works. And that'll also help keep things like jalapenos from getting super mushy because it's fairly low temp, but it's long enough that it's pasteurized and they'll still vacuum seal when you pull them out. Um, additionally, if I'm doing something really, really hot, I could just put the cap on and I've got a chamber vacuum sealer. If I take out the two plates that are in that, there's enough head space in that, that I could fit a pint jar vacuum seal. And it just, what it does is it sucks the, the caps or the lids right on. So if I just wanted a jar, two cans, three cans of something, that makes it super duper easy for me. Way easier and faster than the previous method. Sherry says, sorry, I noticed my message didn't come through right. I meant cucumbers and cilantro make a nice juice. Well, maybe I'll give that a try. Um... Leslie says, hope you're well. Your voice sounds a little bit raspy. Yeah, it is. I don't know if it's, um, it's weird because I used to be able to teach an entire class, like a five-day class, eight hours a day, and my voice was fine. I think partly now I use my voice less. Like I don't, 
honestly talk a whole lot when I'm not on camera. I'm I'm a man of few words, but uh, you know, so you get to hear most of them if you're watching me. <clears throat> but I think I've also noticed that over the course of this fast, my voice gets raspy a lot more quickly. I noticed it on whatever day I recorded the podcast on Sunday. So I recorded the podcast and then I did a live stream and it was getting pretty raspy by the end. And now like I've only done 35 minutes of talking today. I haven't talked until I got you here and already it's getting raspy. So my guess is it probably has something to do with the fast, even though I'm staying very hydrated. I'm taking all, you know, a bunch of electrolytes. Um, it seems to me that maybe there's a, a connection. Um, welcome, Kristen. Leslie says, do you have reflux? Well, I used to. And then I started taking uh, apple cider vinegar. I've got like three videos on that. And that cured it. Now, interestingly, uh, I haven't had any apple cider vinegar during this fast. Uh, I haven't had any uh, reflux during this fast. Now, I am to the point where I only require about a tablespoon in a small glass of warm water that I chug down before bed twice a week, and I don't have any symptoms. And who knows? Maybe maybe I could dial back to one. I, I don't know. I haven't tried. But... Um, Reflux. Reflux improved when I went on keto. And then when I started consuming apple cider vinegar, I was able to get off of omeprazole. I haven't taken it in two years. So that's awesome. So Sandra, I did a video. Uh, let me just see if I can find it here. Uh, bear with me for just one second. What was that called? Okay, looks like they decide. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hey there, farmers all. Not a lot of people have watched this video. I'm about to share it with you. This is a video. Farmers Almanac reached out to me and asked if I would do a video for them on sous vide and you know what is sous vide and how can you use it for canning. And I did. I didn't get compensated for it. But that's fine. If it if it brought anybody over to my channel, it was worth it. So there you go, Sandra. You can check that out. Actually, all of you can check that out. Just not right now. Wait another seven minutes until this uh, live stream is over. Um, Dorothy says, I've been making refrigerator pickles with the cucumbers from my garden. I, we do that too. Um, quick pickling is great. It's Fridge pickles are awesome. You know, but but then you also like to have some stuff that lasts that you can be eating throughout the year. Um, so we wind up doing lots of jalapenos. I love, I just I love peppers. I I love them or chilies, and um, you know, so I've even got like you know a tattoo right here. So we wind up jarring a lot of those, and then I just I I can I would rather eat jarred or canned jalapenos or habaneros than, than candy. To me, that's just, I love them. You know, I'll take a little slice of cheddar cheese, throw a few jalapenos on it and, you know, eat that. That, that to me is a snack. I shouldn't be talking about food right now. Um, I'm, I'm seriously missing food. I'm not, I don't have like cravings or anything. Well, actually I take that back in a way I do because like I'll go to feed my cats and first off the, the same pantry door that has their cat food also has the, the nuts. And to me, nuts is my go-to for a snack, nuts and cheese. That's kind of what I go to uh, on any given day. That's as I break my intermittent fast, it's usually I grab a handful of pistachios or almonds or whatever and uh, you know, a couple of slices of cheese and I'm good to go till dinner. So first I open, you know, every time I open that pantry, you know, I just see the um, chili spiced pistachio bag from Sam's Club there. And I'm like, oh, or I'll see. Uh, well, actually what happens is I open up the cat food, the dry food uh, bin, and I smell it. And I'm like, oh, that smells good. 
I wonder how that tastes. That's that's how you know you've been on a fast for a while when you're seriously contemplating, you know, having a handful of cat food, just you know, scooping it up and see how it tastes. Um, but yeah, I'll, I cannot wait to have just a big plate of bacon and eggs. Like if someone said, "Hey, your next fast is 30 days of you know doing the BBBE challenge," that kind of sounds tasty right now. I bet I could. I bet I could go a week for sure on beef, bacon, butter, and eggs at this point. That's what I want. I have no craving for sweets. I have no craving for, you know, breads or anything like that. But my body is hungry for some fat, for sure. So, all right, just catching back up. Kim says, do you, do you know if you use the sous vide in the Instant Pot? Yes, I do know if I use it or not. And I haven't yet. That would be interesting. What would really be interesting is if I ran, I don't know, I don't, I don't know if I can. I'd have to see because you're not under pressure. So I could probably run um, like a flex cable thermometer into that and just test how stable the temperature is. Thing is for sous vide, like I got into sous vide right when sous vide supreme released like the first consumer sous vide device, which is, you know, bigger than a bread box. It's you know, sizable. Um, it doesn't have an immersion circulator, but very consistent at temperature. And it was five or 600 bucks, you know, back when I got it, geez, had to have been 12 years ago. It was right after I had read the book, Modernist Cuisine at Home. And I'm like, Ooh, I got to get in on this sous vide thing. And at the time, the only other thing was the immersion circulators from PolyScience. And those were like $1,600 back then. So it's great now that there are consumer priced sous vide immersion circulators. So in addition to the sous vide Supreme, I also have the jewel, which was, I think I was part of the Kickstarter on that. I think I contributed to that. It was originally from chef steps. And then I think they got purchased by Phillips maybe. Um, then I've got the kitchen boss one that I did a review of on, on the channel. And then I've got the Innova precision oven, which cooks sous vide. So I've got like a lot of potential sous vide options. And I'd honestly forgotten that my instant pot has sous vide as well. So it might be interesting at some point to do. And, I, and if I did a comparison of all those, that's the sort of material that I believe goes on lean body mind and not on serious keto. Jam 24 says totally struggling with net carbs. Something, um, sometimes my blood Sugar may skyrocket, but not get kicked out of ketosis, even with keto chow or some perfect keto show stuff, an insulin issue. And my answer on that is people are different. It seems like the most obvious statement in the world, but they are. It's crazy that some people get affected by some things, so other people don't, which is why whenever I do a glucose test, I make sure to point that out. I am one person. My response doesn't mean that you're going to have a response. However, if I do have a response, that may, that's probably a red flag. If I don't have a response, that means check yourself. If I do have a response, it probably means avoid this product altogether. And some examples are, I don't have a response from Chalk Zero products and they use soluble corn fiber. Some people do. Based on what I've read in comments, it looks like maybe 10% of people do. So that's why I'm, I'm big on, you gotta test yourself. So Song is Broken says, I do intermittent fasting for 16 hours, but the eight hours during which I eat, I think about food all the time. I love my low-carb food. I I love food. I, I'm a foodie. And I have spent a lot of time this week thinking, not so much about the stuff I want to eat, but thinking about stuff I want to make, you know, and thinking about upcoming recipes and videos like that. Um which then, whether you're thinking about eating something or thinking about making something, still neither are probably good when you're on keto because um, it makes your tummy growl. And incidentally, my Google News feed, because it knows I like, you know, looking at, at articles about food, I go into my Google News feed and I'll, I'm like, oh, more food, more food, more food, Green Bay Packers, more food, more food. Um, 
So maybe I need to stop going through the Google app for uh, a couple of days. Uh, I got out onto Instagram and, you know, the first thing I see is Carolyn Ketchum from All Day I Dream About Food as this new zucchini chocolate bread with a cheesecake swirl in it. And I about passed out. I'm like, oh, oh. I don't know if you can go into a, a diabetic coma just from looking at a picture, but I, I came close. So welcome, Patty. Lady Smith says, I just restarted uh, keto. Hypoglycemia is hard to control on SAD. And I crashed recently for the first time in years. Calcium levels are awesome on keto. It's all about life now. Yeah. I mean, I just think it kind of goes back to what I said about monitoring blood glucose and spikes. You got to monitor your blood glucose as well and, you know, see if you're going too low. It, it can happen. Welcome, Cat Chicks. Welcome, Worship Dancer. Welcome, Joey. Welcome, Rebecca. You guys are making it right about the time I was ready to shut things down here. So you, you'll you have to go back and, and re-watch. I will, since we've got a couple of people that joined late, I will go a few minutes longer. Then I got to, yeah, I'm starting to feel it <clears throat> in my throat here, losing my voice. Um, one of the other things that may be a topic, I don't know if I got any carnivores in the audience. If so, prepare to be offended. Uh, I have found like two years ago when I would get comments from carnivores on my channel, they were like the nicest people. They're like super chill. You know, they're like, Hey, if you think you feel good on keto, I encourage you just try carnivore for a week. You know, that sort of thing. Very soft sell. They have subsequently become very abusive and in your face, or at least in my face. You know, they're like, screw keto, keto's for wussies, you should be doing carnivore, all that other stuff you're eating is poison. There was a person yesterday who made a comment that said, vegetables will kill you. And I thought, huh, interesting. Because, like, there has been throughout history, I had to Google this, 8 billion people that have lived and I suspect a good chunk of them ate vegetables without being murdered by the vegetable. You know, it's this sort of hyperbole that that doesn't win arguments. And I have seen more and more of it out of carnivores lately. It's, uh, I don't know, they need to, they're, they're starting to turn, they're, they're like, the same way vegans, some vegans get like crazy over here. It seems like some carnivores now are getting crazy over here. Maybe it's because of the price of meat. Maybe they're just angry because meat prices are so high. I don't know. But, you know, hopefully if any of you out there are carnivore, trust me, the soft sell works a lot better. Julie says, I just made her zucchini bread. So I'm assuming with the swirl on Sunday. So I'm assuming we're talking about Carolyn. Yeah, I'll be looking for any sort of recipes that utilize zucchini because I find if you have one zucchini plant, you can feed a neighborhood. If you have two zucchini plants, you can feed a village. And we've got two. We've also got some spaghetti squash that go, is going. It looks like, based on my trip out to the garden this morning to water, um, I'm probably going to have some spaghetti squash in another week or so that I'll be able to start eating. So I'm excited about that. Rebecca says, I'm trying to reduce to two meals per day. It takes me at least an hour to eat enough. Uh, 30 to 50 grams of protein per meal. Is that normal? What do you do? Um, I don't track, for one thing. Um, I used to track everything in Carb Manager or a Chronometer, but I don't anymore. I've kind of gotten in tune enough with my body that I just kind of know if I'll just avoid certain things and I'm good. And we eat protein for dinner every night. And I don't know if I'm just a fast chewer. Courtney accuses me, you'll find, in Wednesday's video for uh, some Chalk Zero product. She's like, how do you how do you eat so fast? I'm like, I don't know, I chew fast. Which means oftentimes I wind up biting the inside of my lip. So, so I, maybe I should just chew slower and then it would take me longer to go through meals as well. The other thing too is I, I'm, I get, as much as I enjoy eating and enjoy food, I eat until I'm satisfied. And when I'm satisfied, I'm done being at the table. You know, I'm not going to sit there and just be bored at the table because then I'll continue to eat after I'm satisfied. So when I'm done, 
I'm away from the table. I think maybe my family has found that unsociable, but you know, if, if I'm done eating and I'm not drinking wine, doesn't give me a lot of purpose to hang out at the table. I can talk to them at any time outside of the table. Uh, so Song is Broken talks about followers of Sean Baker. He actually used a clip of me without my permission on one of his videos uh, at a point where I was talking about how carnivores seemed really chill. But uh, I don't know if he'd use a clip of me saying that I think that they've turned into a bunch of uh, zealots. You know, the other thing, too, is Lisa brought this up, and I mentioned this to Christy Davis yesterday, like, because she was kind of uh, on the whole, you know, back off ingredient police thing uh, on a little Instagram short she did. And my attitude is, if you are happy with any aspect of your life, whether that's um, what you eat, how you exercise, um, where you live, what sports teams you follow, your religion, whatever. If you're happy with it, then just go ahead and be happy with it. Don't feel obligated to try and take a piss on everybody else that doesn't like and believe the same things that you believe in. Like if you're that happy, why can't you just go be happy? So I suspect some of these people, especially the more militant, zealous keto police, I wonder if they're really, truly happy with their version of keto, you know, or if they're just trying to spread their misery on other people by being, you know, super strict. I'm not sure. Uh, Joey asked about the, the figures back there. Yeah, all of those are Funko. I've, I've always had sort of a collector sort of a vibe, and so does my wife. If I move the camera, maybe I can. Do, 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 do. So my wife likes Barbies. She's got all manner of different uh, Barbie dolls and stuff. She also started doing some Pop Funko. Those are hers over there. That's Duran Duran still in the boxes. And then we got the Brady Bunch up top there. But we both are sort of collectors of toy type stuff, especially if it's pop culture type things. So uh, Lady Smith was uh, just, she, she, she's clarified. She was talking hypocalcemia, not hypoglycemia. That's the problem when things are scrolling by. I do my best to read. So I was wrong. Sherry says, try the indigo. Did you mean to type milk or Neely? I did try it, Cheryl. If we're talking about her hot dog bun, I tried it and I made a video about me making them and trying them and giving her credit for it. Scott says, uh, the lunatic fringe is everywhere. I find most uh, carnivores are okay, but I agree it's getting popular enough to attract some loud loonies. That, I think probably that happens with everybody. And I think also it's probably, this is my hypothesis, people who are new to it. When people are new to anything and they're just filled with passion, they want to absorb as much as they can and they tend to glom on to some of the more, um, I don't know what word I would use. Cult-like isn't the word, but... You know, you get people, maybe cult of personality type people, like a like a Sean Baker MD or somebody like that, and they they take a little bit of information and then they just run with it and they want to prove to everybody else how much they know about carnivore and get up into everybody's grill. I think that's what maybe happens. It's the it's the newbie enthusiasm, or at least that's the credit that I'll give them. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Either way, it's annoying. Um, cat chick says I'm heading to carnivore. I think, okay. Same thing. Crazy people. Um, you know, I've got nothing against carnivore. I just, I enjoy a wider variety of food. So because of that, I choose not to, um, that's not an, an excuse. It's just a statement. All right. I'm going to read a few more comments and then probably wrap this up. So, Kenneth, yeah, dogmatic. I've used the term dogmatic before, and very often these individuals are dogmatic, but they also, I'm looking for something that's more of a, 
the personality, I don't know, I'm not, I, I'm not articulating it well. There are certain people within every community that draw a lot of other people to them. And then people like to then quote that person and throw that person in your face. I think an example in the keto realm or a couple of people, I think Dr. Eric Berg is one, like people get out, they see a video by him and they just want to, you know, run with it and, you know, tell everybody. Um, I think, I think the ingredient police tend to be pretty big fans of Bobby Parrish at Flav City because, you know, they, they like to quote him when they're like, well, you shouldn't use almond fire, uh, flour because it's got phytates and phytates are bad. Um, so there's certain people, and I, like I said, I don't know what adjective I would use to describe them, um, that tend to attract people who then like to then quote that person and throw it in everybody's face. So Rebecca says, for the sake of those who arrive late, how's the fast going? My advice is go back and watch the replay. Um, it's going well. I do feel, you know, slightly weak today. And I don't know if I, maybe I'll just have to really amp up the electrolytes and see how that goes. Um, but I'm feeling, it's not like low energy. I just, I felt it when I went out for my morning walk. I just, I didn't feel, I well, I knew, I knew as I was walking that I didn't feel as energetic. I didn't feel as strong. And then when I, you know, my watch went off at the one mile mark and said my pace was like 17 minutes, three seconds. I'm like, okay, that's, that's well over a minute slower than my typical pace. So, and I just, I didn't feel it in me to up the pace. So, Joey says, as long as someone does not try to impose their beliefs onto others, we have our own brains and should never believe everything we see and hear. It's our responsibility to fact check everything. I would agree. Patty says, I call those people groupies. Yeah, there's definitely some groupies out there for some of these folks. Uh, fanatics, yeah, you know, I don't know. Um, someone asked me the other day, um, or I don't know if it was in this or if they left a comment or, or what, about uh, Eric Berg. And my response was, I used, to, I used to be a fan. I used to be a subscriber. I don't know if I'm still a subscriber. I might be. I got a point where like, I was getting three video notifications from him a day. The guy just churns out content left and right. And for me, the, the critical moment was when I pulled up his list of videos and I looked at like the last 60 days and I didn't see a keto video, I think in there and everything that I did see, every thumbnail just looked like the sort of thing you would see on the, on a tabloid as you're going through the checkout at the grocery store. It seemed like just like home remedies gone wild. And um, at that point, I, I I realized this is probably not not a channel for me anymore uh, and quit watching. And it, and it feels like there are a handful of channels that are like that out there that that people that, you know, they, they watch if, you know, it's sort of like Dr. Oz. If you did everything that Dr. Oz said on his TV shows, if you took every home remedy, every cure, and you avoided everything he said was bad, like your brain would probably explode just from a, a total lack of congruence. You know, you're just like, I can't, I can't make all of this work simultaneously in my life. You know, the gin soaked raisins for arthritis and this and that, and, you know, rubbing coffee on my face and, you know, tapping on the back of my head to get rid of tinnitus. I mean, if tapping on the back of your head got rid of tinnitus, don't you think everybody would be cured by now? They're like, oh, really? That's all you got to do? So I just, I, I find some of this stuff very clickbaity and I've got a natural aversion to clickbait, whether it's um, good, good material or bad material. So I got that rant off, off my chest. So Leonard says, for some reason, his blood glucose is around 100 after 40 hours of fasting. Wow, that seems kind of high. I'm going to do a live, we'll do a live glucose test right now to kind of end things. Got, uh, 
I, you're, you're missing. I'm like, oh, geez, I don't need a glucose strip. I don't care about that right now. Uh, just my alcohol pad, Keto Mojo, Stabby Pen. Now, what's interesting, I'll share a little something with you. If you go out to the website socialblade.com, you can put in a person's channel and like see a lot of interesting statistics about it. Uh, subscribers, subscriber growth, you know, when the channel was created. You can also see the estimated income that that channel makes. And I did that for Dr. Eric Berg, and it's shocking. I'll just say that. But uh, so if, if you're ever curious about any channel and how everybody's doing and like, gee, is Steve making money just hand over fist? I'm not, but you can go out onto socialblade.com and look up any channel and see how it ranks, you know, versus other channels, uh, income, etc. It's kind of wild. So here we go. Now, I, people are like, oh my God, how can you stab like right there? That's got to be the most tender place in the world. Stabbing, you know, like right between your cuticle and your first knuckle. On the contrary, Skin is really thin there, so you're able to set the plunge depth like to one or two on, on your pen. And I swear, you feel the click of the pen in this hand more than you feel the poke on your finger. So it's way better than doing like the, the side. So you get right there between the, the uh, cuticle and the, uh, and the first knuckle. All right, here we go. That that's fifty-five, not twenty-two. I don't know which uh, which direction you're seeing it. If it were twenty-two, I would probably panic. Fifty-five is enough to get the uh, the little apple icon to show up on this. Like, hey, go eat a piece of fruit. But uh, I think that's not aware that I'm actually, however many hours. What did I say before? Approaching 80 uh, into my fast. So one of the things that I'm going to do, and this will be the last thing I talk about before I wrap things up, for the pragmatic keto video that I do, um, I am going to do some uh, like repeated testing with the Keto Mojo because, and I don't think the folks at Keto Mojo are going to like this a whole lot. Um, because it, I'm sure it's going to show some variation in the readings and it's, it's variation that is, you know, FDA approved, you know, they, they set the standards for what you can do and how, you know, what the tolerance levels are for consumer grade electronics or consumer grade health equipment. And on a $50 piece of equipment, it's going to be different than it is on a $25,000 piece of equipment. And people need to be aware of that. They need to be aware of that from a pricing standpoint, but they also need to be aware of it from recognizing that they, you can't get all fed up on a you know 10 or 20 cent strip if the number comes out wonky once and then you test again and it seems to come out right. But um, I suspect I'm going to do probably like five, five in a row, like and then I may even do a couple like from different fingers, but, but to be consistent, I'll do five in a row all from the same site to show it. And I, I suspect we're going to see some variation and I'm doing this because I'm, I want to be transparent. I, I realize I'm an affiliate marketing partner with Keto Mojo. I get a little commission anytime somebody buys a Keto Mojo product, but I'm not going to try and pull the wool over someone's eyes and say, listen, this will give you a perfect reading every single time. It doesn't. So that's going to be part of pragmatic keto. So Sorry, I just heard a weird noise. I think my neighbor just started edging his lawn. I think that's what I'm hearing. So that's going to be it for this. Again, I am so happy that all of you were able to join. I'll probably do one more of these this week. Uh, if you are a... Can you hear that? That actually, it sounds like an airplane flying remarkably low. Or 
right that or someone oh, there's a drone outside my house but um if you are uh one of the two top tiers of my channel members so sous chef or executive chef i already sent out an announcement if you haven't seen it that i will be doing my kitchen live stream on thursday and i'm going to probably do two executive live chats depending on how many people are able to join um at some other random time this week and or weekend but i will be back publicly with all of you probably on Thursday, which may be as I'm easing out of the fast, or it may be still one day left in the fast, in which case then I'll probably do yet another one of these like on Saturday, because I'll definitely, definitely be easing out by Saturday. The longest I'm going to take this will be till Friday night. That will be a full seven days. So thank you everybody. For those of you who um, are, uh, joining late, feel free, go back, hit replay, watch the start. It should be up and loaded in about two minutes after I hit end stream. So everybody have a great day. Thanks for watching.